good morning. It is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, and I am headed to that lock and bar unit that uh, the rep spent hours on. And I'm gonna be pulling it apart, cleaning it all off, inspecting everything, seeing if any of the burner components need to be replaced because uh, of cross-contamination. And we'll take it from there. The new guy isn't with me today, Dove. He is with, uh, he's at the shop, Peter's there. He's getting his van set up for, for running uh, plumbing service calls, so. Yeah, we'll see how this goes, and he wants to see how to take this lock and bar apart, so. I'm gonna try to make this video a little bit more uh, in depth. Okay, so here's our unit, which has been running um, with no issues, supposedly, for the homeowner for the past day. Okay, thank you. Um, I arrived, and the lock of our rep didn't even put the unit back together. This is, this is how it was when I got here. And I don't know if you see that there, but that is Teflon tape on a gas connection, which... That's not uh, allowed in New York, so interesting that he did that. But should be good to shut everything down. Power right there. And we'll go with shutting our gas off and start with our disassembly. Um, I'm going to take off our igniter right here. Um, take off these bolts right here as well as these bolts right here and then I can pull off this burner assembly when I remove our uh, fresh air uh, intake as well and then uh, we'll inspect everything and see how it looks and clean it okay so I disconnected our gas fitting right here from the blower and I disconnected the union and then I was able to drop our gas valve down and our gas piping. I disconnected my air intake here as well as up here and removed our 90 with our little Fernco type thing. Now, here's our burner and should be able to carefully pry it all up without destroying that gasket. Just look, make sure it's not sticking everywhere. And let's see, I'll pull that out. I'll need both hands for that. And it'll just kind of come out towards me. It's hot. And there we have it, taken out. The uh, outside of our burner here does look okay. It's the uh, inside that we saw that had uh, visible issues, so let's see if our, that's our igniter, which is new. That was just put in there. I'm going to set this to the side. And take a look inside of here. And we do have quite a fair amount of corrosion in there, uh, which appears to be due to cross-contamination. Let's see uh, all our baffles in there. Um, we're gonna try to get this cleaned up as soon as possible, as, as best as possible. Uh, we also don't wanna scratch this metal surface with anything abrasive, so we'll be using like plastic brushes and plastic bristles and things like that. I have one in my bag here. Oh, this is a nice thin brush that's like the perfect size for those tubes. And I'll just go in and out on those tubes I'll clean off the outside, probably rinse it down. This I'll be taking apart, um, cleaning well, and as well as blowing through the burner with uh, compressed air. But I'll show you all that stuff inside of there. And in here, you could see that white buildup of ash. And it's in a lot of the burner holes as well, like there's clogged ones. Those are all uh, stuff that needs to be taken out of here, so. We gotta try to clean this out as best as possible. Um, that way the fuel to air mixture can go through here properly to be burned. Um, it needs to go out of all those tubes to be a nice good flame. Um, 
especially where like the flame sensing rod the igniter is because there's not a good flame there it's not going to sense flame um but yeah we just need to make this clean and there's our plate that everything mounts on everything looks okay there our blower and i'm going to take the venturi apart now and what I'm going to do here is, this is our Venturi assembly. We've already actually cleaned out this section right here in between the blower and the Venturi. But what I want to do is give this piece of plastic a nice good cleaning. Because the dampers that are in there, which you kind of can't really see too well, were getting stuck. So I'm going to take this apart and try to clean that off. So I did have to take the whole thing apart so that I could push this black plastic piece through. It doesn't want to pull out easily. But this is that damper that was getting stuck see there is that little dark spot that's a sticky substance so it was causing this to get stuck there i'm going to try to clean that off really well and then as far as on our metals you could see that corrosion from the cross contamination where there's moisture in the exhaust getting into the uh, fresh air so that was addressed already but now we got to take care of all of the issues that it left behind. Um, it's only a two-year-old unit. It's, you know, the, the, the venting and fresh air was like three feet away, so it seems odd that it became an issue with cross-contamination, but that's the case, so we're gonna try to fix it. We did not install this unit, by the way. This was installed by other people. And for cleaning all this, it's so tight. I tried to wipe it all off with a towel, but I'm not really getting everything. So I'm gonna use this brush with a little bit of water and just try to get it as clean as I can in all those little crevices, which I'll use both hands for. And then I'll dry it off. And I know it's not perfect, but I was able to get it much better. Um, a lot of that's just like permanent kind of discoloration and pretty hard to get off with uh, without going with something more abrasive, which we don't wanna do and I tried to clean off this corrosion as well. Um, in the blower, or in the unit, it sits like this. So water pools at the bottom when uh, combustion gases are ending up recirculated, which caused that little bit of like pitting and corrosion, which is uh, unfortunate, but it'll never be perfect again. And it stinks, but it's what we're gonna have to live with. Um, I did bring in a bucket. I am gonna be using water to uh, scrub this off and rinse this off. Um, and then that'll run into the bucket. We could see kind of what water we took out. You know, the bucket's a little bit dirty, but it's kind of staining, so we should be able to get a pretty good indication from the color of the water in the bucket. And then, uh, of course, taking this out there and blowing it out, vacuuming it off, brushing it off. And you can see these like stains here that is from water falling onto and resting in the burner, boiling off in the burner. Uh, again, from that cross contamination. I did just brush this out really well, got a lot of dust out, um, tried to get a lot of that ash out, but the rest is going to have to be blown out with some high pressure nitrogen for the burner. I'm going to be scrubbing it uh, with some water and letting all that crud run out of there um because it's pretty uh pretty caked on that debris which is again surprising for two years but it is that cross contamination you can't argue the lock of our rep on that it is very clear but i think yeah i don't know it's it's just interesting that it happened because our, our fresh air is right there and our exhaust is right there and the only difference in what they need in the manual is that there isn't an elbow pointing down on the fresh air, but that's only gonna bring the fresh air an inch or so below the exhaust. So I don't know that that's really gonna make all that much of an improvement, but that's what the lock and var rep wanted, so. Get with cleaning. Okay, so there's our bucket of water that we rinsed through. And here's the condition I was able to get it in. It's a lot of staining. I did scrub really hard, uh, rinsed a lot, but oh, the camera's fogging up. 
but uh, this looks like that's going to be the best I'm going to be able to get it. Um, I got a lot of debris off, a lot of chunks, a lot of crusty bits, but the staining itself, that's not coming off. Um, maybe if I put some sort of chemical in here, but they don't want chemicals in here. So uh, that's, that's how it's going to be. Now I'll take the burner outside and hit that with uh, nitrogen and blow it out really well. Okay, so I got my nitrogen regulator on there. It's pretty much a new tank. It is a new tank, I haven't used them yet. It's gonna be hard to see because I fast forwarded through this clip, but I was really surprised at how much like dust that this was really able to pull out. Like it pulled out a ton, a ton of dust. It, it was really fine, so the camera didn't pick it up well, but from now on, I think on these high efficiency boilers that this is gonna be the way to, to clean out those burners because it made a very big difference. You can see like a color difference when I was going over the uh, the mesh initially, but yeah, getting it cleaned out. Okay, so that's uh, as good as we're gonna get it. That's a lot of air pressure. I blew out a lot of dust. I hope the camera picked that up. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'd never heard of using compressed air up until recently, so I haven't gotten to try it on any burners lately. If it's been bad, it's usually just been water. But, yeah, I'll use that <laughs> a lot more now, because that uh, got a lot of dust out of there. Pretty impressed. Uh, I wonder how much of a difference that's going to make as far as the uh, combustion. So, now we just got to start reassembling and testing. And we should be... Hopefully, okay. It doesn't look like anything here needs to be replaced. Um, looks like cleaning should work out. The Venturi makes me a little bit nervous, but we are moving without any issues. Both dampers, so I do think that will be okay. Um, I guess we'll just have to see what happens in the long run. Maybe just be ready to order a Venturi for him. Or maybe the Venturi should be replaced. I don't know. Leave in the comments what you think. But start reassembling now. This I'm not bothering to clean. There's no use in that. Uh, because this insulation covers it. This has no significant role other than holding everything together. And now I'm going to take off that Teflon that he put on the gas valve. I don't know if you can tell, but that looks like he used, like, 30 wraps, too. Like, so much Teflon tape. And you're not even supposed to use any of it. So I'm going to take off that and put some pipe dope on. So we don't use Teflon on gas in New York. It's not allowed. No Teflon tape on gas. No PTFE tape on gas in New York. Okay, so here's the unit. Uh, I'll put back together. Got the covers on waiting on this cover because I'm going to do combustion and everything like that um, but we should be okay to power on and hopefully we go into normal operation we ignite and hold flame and everything like that and if a combustion needs adjustment we'll be adjusting that and one of the fixes he had was let's put a bunch of electrical tape on the igniter And we lit. It's hard to show with a uh, flashlight on, so I turn my flashlight off. You can see our flame, we're running, and we'll get our test all ready to do our combustion test. 10.9 UA on our flame sense, that has to stay above 8. So, so far, so good. Okay, so. Unit is now in standby. We got our high and our low fire combustion readings, which are good. They're within range. I put a label there that I did a heat exchanger cleaning, and 
and everything's testing out okay. So it looks like we're gonna be good to go. Hopefully it stays that way for a while now. Okay, so I finished up with that. That went very smoothly. Um, and customer's happy that it's just all in the past. Now we should be issue free for a while. But I'm headed now to a ream warranty case. Water leaking in Hempstead. Uh, I have a few ream warranties. Two ream, nope. I get they got switched. I got a ream warranty, a heating issue, and a steam heat issue. So see what happens. Okay, so customer said at ten twenty eight, uh, eleven twenty eight, that he would be here in fifteen minutes. It's now eleven fifty five. If you could see it, eleven fifty five, and he's still not here. I called five minutes ago, and he said he's on his way. So, we're at 25 minutes uh, out of the 15 that he gave us. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so the system's not installed properly. They have a backflow prevention device on their water main. And the, the unit's You're leaking because right, as the water street. heats up, pressure goes up. And uh, it leaks out of the pressure relief valve because there's an expansion tank missing. They just in put the tank in not long ago and they street. removed the expansion tank for who knows why. The guy kept the expansion tank in the garage. I quoted him a price to install an expansion tank through us. Um, and he wants to install that used tank. I said, we're not gonna waste our time installing a used tank. We don't know if it's good or bad. It feels like there's water in the bottom of it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But now I'm headed to a no heat, or heating issues in Valley Stream. It's disgusting. The house smells absolutely awful. There's cockroaches running around everywhere, just openly in the kitchen. There's garbage everywhere. I think there's air in the second floor line. Um, because there's no circulation through it, but it's on the same circulator as the first floor line. Second floor is also not gonna really get hot for a while because it's 80 degrees on the first, literally it's 80 degrees on the first floor. They have the house heated to 80 degrees, so. The thermostat's on the first floor, it's gonna satisfy. <laughs> this thermostat doesn't go higher than 80 degrees. And upstairs is still gonna be cold. It's gonna have to balance out for a while. Okay, so I saw the uh, water heater. Venting's not even hooked up and it's just spewing carbon monoxide into the basement. So now I gotta fix that too. Cause, you know, I don't wanna die and I don't want the people that live here to die, so. Trying to see what I have as far as fittings and smoke pipe for that. I thought I had four inch smoke fittings. I see five inch. What's back here? That looks like five. Yeah, that's five inch. Great. Then I'm gonna have to see if Peter can run, run over here with some uh, smoke 90s. Unless I'm missing them. No, I don't have any. Maybe I could get a length in there to make it work. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, I couldn't record in there. I, I just needed to get out. It was just absolutely disgusting. There's mold and mildew, cockroaches everywhere, crawling up the walls, crawling on the floor. I don't care if other people see that all the time and deal with it all the time. I don't want to deal with it. So, I, I'm not bringing that home to, to my parents' house. You get a cockroach in your bag, cockroaches in your shoes, they come home and then that's it. So, got done there, made sure everything was burning safely. It was so airbound because they tried to drain the boiler they thought they were purging it using the drain valve on the bottom and uh, the uh, water heater had to be fixed the boiler is like in rough shape there's multiple like small drips boilers overfeeding uh, expansion tanks bed on the water heater relief valve stripping on the water heater this is a nightmare situation but they actually tipped me, which I was very surprised. But I don't... That's... 
don't like that. I'm not, I hate, I hate cockroaches. That's, it's disgusting to think of cockroaches just living freely throughout your home. We have exterminators for a reason. I mean, they're literally crawling all over the counter, on the pots and pans. There's like no hygiene. I guarantee you they have a rat or a mouse problem too. But headed to the next call, which is in Farmingdale on the way home. Steam heat issues. Also has a hydronic zone. Six plumbers have tried to diagnose. None have been able to fix the issue. So hopefully I'm not number seven. Uh, we'll see what happens. Here's our steam boiler that was put in in 2019 by them. Uh, see our piping. We have our header comes up and it does come up 16 inches off the boiler. Uh, we pick up our steam main and we, we go through our equalizer back into the bottom of the boiler. We have a Hartford loop, although it's made out of copper. And there is a little bit of an issue here. So you can see we pitch away from the boiler and this is on our dry return line. We pitch away from the boiler, we'll drain away from the boiler. And right here, we're draining into the boiler. So water's gonna pull right here and you're gonna get banging right here and it shouldn't be copper. There is a hydronic zone that's piped off of a secondary heat, like heat exchanger. Our pressure troll is right above our low water cutoff. Um, we were overfilled when I got here, but I let some water out and our level went uh, where it needs to go. And it looks like now that we're running, we're surging, which could be a result of possibly the piping, but it could be dirty water as well. Um, there's our pressure gauge, which is bouncing. Uh, I guess as the water level is bouncing. But I do feel it's hot. We are making steam right now. And we get a lot of water out of radiator air vents and radiator shutoff valves and a lot of banging. So we're here to figure out what we can do to stop that. And if you take a look here, this is a dry return again, and we're pitching to the steam main. We're not pitching back to the boiler, so we're gonna get water sitting in here, and it's gonna bang, because the water level in the house is about here on the boiler. So there's not supposed to be water in these other than water running back to the boiler. And then we could raise the steam main up a little bit. But they recently did this ceiling here which is where the main and the return line all come through. So we have no idea of the pitch situation all throughout that, that run, but we know it's been messed with. So that's gonna be a big issue. I'm waiting to see if the boiler builds up pressure because she's having so many radiator spray steam, but so far not really getting much. Uh, looks like our surging has uh, gone down by a lot, too. And here's one of our leaking radiator valves, which I just shut off. It looks like they kept an old nipple at some point in its life, but replaced the radiator valve. And they didn't match up, so it's leaking from the bottom of that union. I closed it off for now, so we don't damage the floor any more than it already has. But this radiator did get hot very quickly. Okay, so I just came downstairs because a radiator that was not getting steam, finally, after like 45 minutes of this boiler running, is getting steam. So I figured we're building up uh, some sort of pressure and then that's a better event. Right now we're at about two PSI. We don't want to be at two PSI. We want to be at half a PSI, but usually it's never going to be perfect, especially when we have deficiencies in the system piping. But what we want is that air vent to be fixed so that it lets air pass freely without the boiler building up pressure. And we want to make sure that our pressure troll shuts off that pressure. 
and our cut in plus our cut out equals the cut in plus the differential. So it's a positive, not a negative differential. So we want to go like right on two here. Right at two. That's what I want to do. And we can always reverse this if it's an issue. And we're going to put this at one. You know, so it's going to put it at three. But I would like to be even lower than that. And there's also actually the possibility that this line is clogged as well. But let's see what happens. If we hit three, then I'm going to be checking if the pigtail's clogged. But it's a brass pigtail, so... This would be the perfect situation where we would install a vapor stat uh, to properly control pressure. Which I'm going to bring up to the homeowner. And we gotta fix that return. We gotta raise the air vent, the main air vent. We gotta replace radiator angle valves, uh, shut off valves, and we gotta replace uh, radiator air valves. I'll see what happens here with the pressure, but we're coming up now on like almost three. Just to make sure that the wiring was correct, I uh, pulled off the connection and the boiler did shut off, so now I'm working on the uh, pressure troll. It does look like we got a lot of sludge in there, but I want to wait till this pressure dies down before I pull it out because I don't want pressure of high pressure, high temperature steam shooting out in my face. Right, you can see like there's pressure in it, but it doesn't really want to come out easily. And it should because the threads are loose. And then we're getting sludge pouring out right there. Okay, so I just replaced our pressure troll. Uh, she approved of that with just a standard pressure troll. And when I turned the boiler back on, you heard this noise. That big bang. It's coming from this, somewhere in this piping. But... That shouldn't be happening. And I think adding a pressure reducing valve would help that. Because now, with it, when I close it off, it doesn't do that. And now I get where that, that bang that she was describing came from. That bang is coming from this. Which is very odd. Um, yeah, I wonder if it has to do with that check valve as well. But, um, yeah, I wonder. Because that is annoying. It's like coming from the, from the actual feeder. It's strange, but replace the pressure troll. And then I did raise her air vent six inches to keep it up above the uh, just to prevent water from hitting it. Now we see what happens. So I'm gonna leave this old one here because she is in agreement with the universe. They guarantee this boiler and the parts around it for five years, supposedly, but they come and they say everything's working fine. I'm gonna leave this proof it needed to be replaced. They can test it, it's not gonna work. Whatever route she may wanna go with that, but. Yeah, now it's just a matter of seeing what happens. Okay, so I finished up there for now. Uh, there's a lot of work that she's gonna have to decide whether or not she wants to go through with, because we have to fix that return line pitch. Um, we have to replace some radiator three quarters of a mile. Turn left onto Merritt's uh, Road. What else do we have to do? I think that is about it, but it's money, so she has to decide uh, when, when and if she's gonna do it. I think she was impressed that I knew steam, because she's had 
Um, eight people there, all from a certain company that, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about them, but they're a well-known company. None of them knew uh, how to fix any of the issues that she was having. And every time someone's been in there, they sell her something else. So she originally called them for her faucet and they upsold her on a more expensive faucet. And then when they put that faucet in, they told her she needs a new water heater. After they put the water heater in, they said she needs a water filter, a whole house water filter. After they did the whole house water filter, then they were like, yeah, you need a new boiler. And they converted her from oil to gas. Um, so then they recommended a guy to her to redo her driveway and her driveway ended up being back pitched and water was coming in through the foundation of the basement and that had to be redone and then they said they needed to upgrade the gas line and they had to open up the ceiling um so it's like i don't understand what's going on that they're just they're doing all of these things but then they can't address the actual issues that she's having and it just sounds like they all didn't know what they were doing or didn't care Go to, past this to think yeah, about what they were like doing or try to know left. what they were doing. I don't know, but I'm headed home now. It is 5.30. Um, today wasn't like the, the craziest day because I had that lock and bar and that was three Turn hours. This job I was just at was two and a half hours of just waiting for things to happen, waiting for banging. Um, things like that, waiting for leaks. Um, so, what else did I do? I did the ream call, and I did a no heat in the cockroach place. So, it was a fine day. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Um, comment any advice or criticisms or feedback, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.